So you've landed your big interview and the recruiter asks you the dreaded question, what's your salary expectation? What do you say? If you answer it wrong, you're gonna get rejected. And if you don't answer it at all, you're still gonna get rejected. So how do you handle this one? Not to worry, I'm gonna teach you how to best answer the question, what are your salary expectations in an interview? Hey everybody, it's Brian from the Life After Layoff, and today we're gonna to tackle the age-old dilemma, how to answer the salary expectation question. There's a lot more to it than just answering the question flat out, so we're gonna talk about a lot of those scenarios. And if you're looking for more advice on how to land more interviews, how to navigate through the hiring process, and how to answer questions like, what's your salary expectation? Make sure you hit the subscribe button, because I've got weekly videos planned, it's full of tips and tricks, all from an insider's perspective. Also, if you have a video topic that you'd like me to discuss in video format, leave a comment below, let me know what that is, and who knows, maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. So let's talk about the salary requirement question. Usually near the end of the interview, and especially on candidates that I might be interested in moving to the next round, I'm gonna ask you the question of what's your salary expectation because I want to see if it fits into the salary band that I've got and if I decide to send you over to the hiring manager I'm gonna include this data as part of my initial submission now here's the thing it's not a trick question I legitimately want to know what your salary expectation is for the role because if we get to the point where we're gonna offer you the position we want to make sure that not only are you gonna accept the position but that you're also gonna be excited walking in the door, feeling like you got a good deal. Because we all know that if you accept a salary that's below what your expectation is, you're gonna be unsatisfied and you're gonna be keeping your ears open for other opportunities. And selfishly, I don't wanna to have to refill the position six months or a year from now. So the salary question is an important one for both sides. Now, it's not to say that there aren't going to be any low-quality employers out there who are legitimately looking to lowball you on an offer, because there probably are, but if you watch my channel on any level, you know that I try to teach people to find the best quality employer so that you will avoid this kind of thing to begin with. So if your realistic salary expectations scare them away, good. You probably don't want to work for them anyway. But let's talk about some of the scenarios that you might face, assuming that you're talking to a reputable, well-known employer. The first concern that you might have is what if my salary is higher than the range? Let's face it, if you're too expensive for the role, you're gonna get moved to the no pile. Now I say this within reason, because if we're only 10 grand apart, there might be some negotiating that happens even before we get into the interviewing process further. I might throw out some hypothetical numbers for you or a few different scenarios and say, if I was able to do something like this, would that be something that's interesting to you? And what I'm trying to gauge is how flexible you are or could I maybe make an offer that looks a little different than you might be expecting but still gets you across the finish line. Now, if say we're $25,000 apart, realistically, I'm not gonna be able to come up with an offer that's gonna make sense for you. And at that point in time, I'm probably just gonna tell you, and unfortunately, I think we're probably specced a little differently for this role. Um, is it okay if I keep you in mind for a future role that's maybe a little bit more enriched? Now, if you're really talented, you're the perfect fit, and you're what I consider to be a superstar candidate, I may still send your resume over to the hiring manager with your accurate salary expectations and tell them that, hey, this is another candidate that's really solid, it's a little bit more expensive, if you think you can stretch there, it might be worth talking to. And I've actually had more than one case where the hiring manager then sat down with that person and had a discussion and came back and said, hey, I think I'm gonna enrich this role and make it a level two or a level three position. That actually opens up the salary ranges and I can offer you a wider range of compensation. But I wouldn't go into it expecting that's gonna be the case because that's probably the exception rather than the norm, but it is possible. However, make sure that you're being honest with your expectations because trying to pull a bait and switch tactic on the employer is never gonna work well for you. Let us be the ones to say, hey, we really want this person and maybe we can make this job bigger. But at the end of our interview, we still need to have some base level understanding Otherwise, I'm not gonna to submit to my hiring manager. The second situation is, what if your salary is lower than my band for the role? Now, I love those situations because if I offer you the position, I'm gonna be able to offer you a nice raise and you're gonna be excited about it and we're gonna feel like we're getting a bargain too. You see, major corporations have salary bands, so they know what the minimum, midpoint, and the max of a role is. It's usually based off of local market wage survey and there's also a concept called internal equity. Internal equity is essentially making sure that every other person in the organization at a similar role should be compensated relatively the same. So we don't wanna bring in an entry level person and they're earning 15 or $20,000 more than somebody that's sitting in a similar role that has been there for 15 years. But generally speaking, the talent acquisition group will work with the HR department to help figure out what a reasonable salary range is for the role and then we'll work off of that when we recruit. Now, if you're coming in with a compensation expectation that's below my lowest point of the range, the good news is you're automatically gonna get jumped up to that point. 
you'll most frequently see these circumstances when you have a candidate who's come from a less than reputable company or maybe just a small company that doesn't have the same salary bands. In some cases, it might be that person stepping into a next level role and there might be a bit of a gap between the previous salary band that they're in and this new role. So if you find yourself working for a smaller company or maybe one that isn't as reputable and isn't paying what you're worth on the open market, that's why I talk a lot on this channel about finding the best quality employer. That way you're never gonna to be too far behind in the salary bands and you're gonna be consistent with what the market is paying. And as a side note, if you're looking for how to land a job in a Fortune 500 company, that's what I specialize in. I've got a website called alifeafterlayoff.com. It's loaded with tips and tricks, all from an insider's perspective on how to get noticed by those recruiters, how to get through the hiring process, and land that dream job that you're looking for. I'll leave a link below. Okay, so we've talked about you're above the salary band and you're below the salary band. What about the circumstance where you just refuse to answer the question? If I ask you the question, you give me some vague beat around the bush type of answer, that's not gonna bode well for you. You're almost always gonna be rejected because I'm not gonna put you through an interview process with my team, not knowing that I can get a deal done at the end. Besides, I'm also gonna start thinking that you're hiding something and you don't wanna give me any reason to cast doubt on you. So how do you answer the question? Now, in order to answer it, you're gonna to need to know three major things. The first thing that you're gonna to need to know is what is the average salary range for this type of role in the open market? So how do you find the average salary for a role? Well, you gotta dig for it a little bit. So it's gonna require you to put on your investigative cap and go out and try to find out. I would start with doing a Google search, maybe head over to Glassdoor or salary.com and start looking and seeing what information you can find there. You may also wanna look at other similar types of roles that have been posted recently and see what they're paying. But you wanna be as realistic as possible. So if you're using a tool like Glassdoor or salary.com, you wanna make sure that you're comparing jobs that are in your local area. So if you're in Alabama, for example, you're probably not gonna to wanna to look at what people are getting paid in the Bay Area. It's gonna to be two totally different salary ranges. The second thing that you need to know is what is the company expecting to pay? The final thing that you really need to understand is that bottom line. What is the bottom line salary expectation that you have? This is the absolute bottom that you can go. You'll need to know when you have to walk away from an opportunity. Now keep in mind, you're not necessarily gonna be sharing this number with the recruiter, but you at least need to know what that number is yourself. So all of this stuff leads up to how do I answer the question? The first thing you can do is simply give your expectation. This one's pretty cut and dry. If you know your worth and you feel reasonably confident that the company is in the same ballpark as you, then feel free to give your actual number. But just keep in mind that if you give a certain number, you're also gonna be working with that throughout the rest of the process. So make sure that it's reasonable and something that you can live with. Now, the second way to answer it is if you feel that the company might be giving you a low ball offer or you're gonna be way above what they're expecting. It's better to frame it this way. From the research that I've done in the local market, similar types of roles are paying between 90 to 110,000. Does that align with your target? And that way you're putting the onus on the company to tell you, yeah, we're paying below market value. We're probably not gonna be competing with that type of role. Then you have to make a decision. Is that gonna be a company that you wanna work for? On the flip side, if you're worried about pricing yourself out of an opportunity that you actually might be interested in and would potentially be willing to take a lower salary, I would try it this way. Put the question back onto the recruiter. You can say something to the effect of, while I've been compensated very fairly in the past, an offer is more than just the cash compensation. I understand that companies have salary bands that they need to keep within, and I respect that. Can you give me a ballpark of where the typical candidate that you're talking to is coming in, and I can tell you if that fits. I'll usually tell a candidate, hey, you know, this is what the other candidates that we're looking at are being comped at. Now the recruiter may push back and say, hey, I asked you first or something like that. So you still need to have some answer prepared, but don't avoid the question altogether. So if you go through the interviewing process thinking, well, I'm just gonna be ambiguous. And then by the time we get to the offer, then I'll negotiate it. That almost never works out well. Because in almost every case, the hiring manager is gonna be pretty annoyed that they spent all this time if they really can't afford to go higher than that, and you're not gonna do yourselves any service. Now, if you're going through this process and you start to sense the recruiter is getting frustrated with you, just give them an answer, don't push it any further. Because when a candidate starts to mess around too much with me on that, I put you into the no pile. So there you have it. That's how to approach the compensation question that you're gonna get in an interview. And listen, if you're getting to the point where you're getting the interview, you're actually doing something right. So keep doing what you're doing. But if you feel like you need a little bit more help getting across the finish line, I actually have a training course called the Ultimate Layoff Bootcamp. It is seven hours of dedicated training, all from an insider's perspective on how to get through each step of that process and ultimately how to land that dream job and negotiate the perfect salary for you. I'll leave a link below. It's something that you can check out. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully Hopefully you're going to get that offer soon and we will see you on the next one.